favor in a Caterpillar D6M with dual post GPS. So I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on what we have going on here. So, um, let's go back into regular mode here. So we've got a single line and that's our design. Um, now, you can see I've got a slope, a ditch. This is the road top. It's actually super right now because we're in a corner. And then uh, this gray square is my blade and then another ditch. To just show you kind of what's going on. So as I move the blade around, you can see that it moves around on the screen. So, I've got the blade here. I've also got a little square in the corner of my blade that I'm in uh, single tip mode. So basically what it's doing is it's only taking the information off of one side of the blade or the other, not the whole blade. That'll come into um, effect basically when I'm coming over a shoulder like that. Um, if I want to cut road top grade, what'll happen is if I'm in dual mode, as soon as I'm over that shoulder, it'll try and start uh, cutting the slope. So even though I'm on the road top and I want to be cutting the road top, it'll automatically try and cut the slope on me. That's not what I want. So I have it in single mode right here, so I can actually overhang the shoulder without cutting the slope. Um, again, if I was on the slope and I wanted to bring all the material up onto the road top um, and I wanted to cut slope grade, I could just push this button, it's over on the right hand corner, and uh, I will be cutting the slope only. So I'll just show you kind of how that works. So, get it close. Sorry, it's too high. So you can see it's in slope mode there. I actually can't tilt the blade that far. And what I'll do is uh, as soon as I push the button over there, see how it picks up the road top grade? So that's kind of what that does. Um, the other thing that you saw is all of a sudden now I have two lines. Right? And what the designs are, uh, what the lines are is the black one's always designed and the red one is what I have my offset to. So we're actually doing an undercut here. It's a one meter undercut. So you'll notice that my blade will touch the ground once I reach one meter. One meter and I'm on the ground. And that's back to design right there. So I actually can't reach that high. So I'll bring it down so it stops. So uh, I can run in manual mode or I can just push the button and it kicks the auto. And uh, holding the trigger, um, I can bump up or down my offset. There's also uh, two lines here. And what those lines are is I've just picked an alignment. So right now I'm concerned about the ditch bottom because that will also be the toe of my slope. So uh, what I can do is just push this button. I get an overhead view and I can just pick whichever alignment I want. So uh, if I actually want the shoulder of the road, which should be uh, right in the middle of my blade here, just select it, and my alignment's on the shoulder of the road. That will come into play with this light bar here. So you'll see that the light bar says that I'm way out to the left. And once I have the line where it's supposed to, If I get too far over, it starts telling me, no, I gotta come right, or I gotta go left. Then these light bars here are telling me, telling me my grade up or down. So, I don't know if you can see this one, but this one's right on the money. Obviously, this one is telling me that I'm way too high. Uh, what else can we do? I've got a couple different screens. Right now, I'm kind of in, uh, cross-section view where it shows me my slopes. It's really nice to work in. 
Um, I can also get a top-down view, which is kind of like a blueprint, so you can see the overall design, so you can see the big picture, where I can zoom right in, get just the dozer. I can also scroll around. As soon as I start to move, then it'll move the screen with me. And I can have the dozer stay still and the screen will rotate, or I can have the screen orientation north up, and then uh, the dozer will rotate. Um, and then it shows me my left and right offset, up and down offset, and then uh, how much cut and fill. So uh, if I'm in cross-section mode, it'll show me how far over I am to the alignment. So right now I'm six cents from the alignment. And right there, I'm bang on the money, zero. And uh, I have six cents of fill on my left. So I can come up just a little tiny bit. No fill. So normally, you just kind of use this screen for a little bit of reference. Um, just see, oh yeah, no, I'm going to be in the ditch in a second. And then uh, you're actually just watching the blade and the light bars for the most part. A um, couple of the things you can do is uh, if I actually want to uh, overbuild my slope or whatever, I can uh, go into here and I can put in offsets. So for my light bar, like usually when I cut a slope, um, you've got your slope like this. Um, when you're cutting your bottom, you actually want to cut a little bit too far into your slope. And then what happens is when you trim the material off the slope, it'll fill that gap. So basically you'll have a line, then a little notch, and then your slope. So when you actually do your final trim, you can run your windrow right into the toe of the slope, and you'll get a perfect slope every time. Or you could do it the other way. Um, you could uh, cut too far down with your alignment when you do your slope and then when you do your bottom pass you can fill it in with the windrow. Either way, um, it's the same principle. So I can actually use this um, to do that. So typically um, with this material I'm looking for 20 to 30 cents of offset. So I just put it in right here. 20 cents, okay. And you'll see that it's moved over 20 centimeters. And then my light bar, I can go off my light bar and it'll keep me in perfect alignment the whole time when I'm doing that. And then uh, a couple different screens um, that are important. The first one is your design selects. So that'll be basically the digital blueprints that you're using. Um, so you pick which design you're gonna work off of. That just tells the computer which blueprints you're using. Um, vertical offset, horizontal offset. I've already done that. Um, they have it the second time in the main menu. Um, accuracy, they'll just tell me um, how much we are out to launch. So we're plus or minus five cents right now. So we're all right. Um, the other thing we can do is we can change, uh, go to like course setting for just kind of bulking it in and fine setting. The big difference with that, um, some of you might be wondering is uh, why don't you just run it in fine all the time? Um, when you run it in fine, it's only going to take a little bit of variation before it tries to move the blade on you. So if you're bulking and you're trying to get up over that lump or whatever and you have a lot of blade movement, um, if you have it in course, um, it'll still kind of hold grade for you. Um, if you're in really bumpy material and you have it on fine, um, as soon as you get your track speed up too high, the blade's going to get jittery on you because the hydraulics actually can't keep up with um, the fine movements that the GPS is trying to do, so you get a lot of blade jitter. So if you're just bulking it in, run it in rough or medium, um, that'll let you get your track speed up. And then when you go to do that slow finish pass in first gear, um, drop it down into fine. Um, the big thing is you're trying not to get blade jitter. So if you're getting too much blade jitter, try adjusting your uh, accuracy mode. It's just uh, the same thing as uh, using a laser. You have the rough mode and you have the fine mode. Um, just gets rid of that jitter for you. Uh, blade wear, what you do is uh, you measure the center of the bolt to the edge and then you can put it in here. So right now it has 10 cents of cutting edge right now. Um, as I wear it out, then I can adjust that number. Um, they know uh, 
exactly how high the blade is, how wide the blade is. So as you get blade wear, um, you can adjust it. And then when you get new cutting edges, you adjust it back. Uh, guidance method, talked about that a little tiny bit. So uh, if I do one point center, it's gonna try and pick the middle of the blade. And if I do two points, it'll use both sides. And if I go one point focus, it'll use just that one side. So that's what I'm using right now because the slopes are so narrow that my blade's actually wider than them. So if I try and use the two points, um, it won't know if I'm on the road top or in the ditch. We're just gonna use a single point. Uh, the increment adjustment switch, so that was the trigger in the buttons. So uh, if you're just doing fine adjustments, then uh, you can put it to like one cent or five cents or whatever you wanna do. And light bar scales, again, it's doing the same thing as the fine and coarse mode with the laser, just with the light bars. And then main screen views, those are giving me the options that I can scroll through. Um, you know, like top down, GPS mode, blah, blah, blah. Valve speed, do not touch that ever. That gets set by the surveyor and the dealer. Um, basically they go through and there's a bunch of calibration tests that they run. So you might think, oh, I can change the valve speed and make it go faster. No, you'll fuck everything up. Do not touch it. Ask God about that. Restore settings. Don't touch that one either because it changes your valve speed. So that's kind of the quick rundown. Um, a lot of people think that, oh, you can put anybody in a GPS cat and they'll be able to finish no problem. Well, the problem is if you don't know how to push the dirt, GPS will not help you. It'll tell you how much cut and fill there is, but if you don't know where to put the dirt or how to cut it properly, you're basically toast because you're going to be chasing little cuts and fills all over the place. You have to have a method on how you're going to push the dirt, where the dirt's going to end up. If you get any soft spots or whatever, how you're going to fill them in. Um, and you always work kind of from um, one end to the other. So if you all of a sudden have a problem way down here, you don't want to be pushing dirt from, o from over here all the way back over there just to fix a tiny little spot. So you kind of have to know how to push it there before you can get on a GPS. But it is really nice because now I never have to worry about stakes. I know where everything is. I can go ahead of the hoe and I can uh, rip an alignment line for him, showing him the top of the slope and the bottom of the slope so he knows exactly where to start cutting. So that makes it easier for me. Um, that way I just have a little tiny bit of material to load out. So what I've done now is I've just pushed a little windrow to show him the top of the slope. He knows it's a three to one down. Once he gets so far ahead of me, I come behind him and trim him so he can kind of see and he carries on from there. So GPS, pretty cool. Um, that's a quick rundown on how it works. And uh, if you're in bulking mode, you just put it in manual and just kind of watch your screen to get you close. And once you're close, kick it into auto, do a final trim on auto. Bob's your uncle.